Here we go. Hello, everyone. It's Jen Pisano here. And today I am so honored to have Dr. Josie with us. She wrote a chapter in my book, Sacred Medicine, and she is here to talk to you about animals. Her chapter specifically was how animals are the medicine. And that's such a powerful statement. And I just want to have you elaborate on that, Dr. Josie. What is it about our four-leggeds that is so um, healing for us? Hi, Jen. Um, yeah, animals Animals have been like the, they're the love of my heart for my, all throughout my whole life. But I, um, I wrote this chapter, my whole life has kind of been funneling into this time period. And over the years, I've been treating animals one-on-one -on -one as a holistic veterinarian in their home environment. I've been sitting with them and sitting with their people. And what I've realized is they are, they are the gateway for humans to get back to a different way of living on this planet. <laughs> Um, mm. to reconnect with Gaia, to reconnect with Pachamama, to reconnect with this living, this network that we have holding us, allowing us to not only live, but thrive here. And they can teach us how to do that. I mean, I've seen incredible lessons coming from the animals in impermanence, in teaching us how to be in the present moment, um, how to have gratitude for the simplest things in our lives, um, just getting people outside of their houses and walking and walking through the woods, checking out the wildlife in their own backyard and reconnecting with this world around us that we've become so separated from. And, you know, honestly, I look at all the problems that are going on today and the mayhem that's happening, and they're all human made things that are dissolving and breaking apart, and we need to be able to let them go. And I think the animals are here to support us, even with that. If, well, talk you know, to me about that, because I know the medicine that you shared in this book is mm -hmm. about relieving anxiety and stress, not mm -hmm. only in our animals, but also in us. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know what you have to say about that because I've been in animal rescue and, and saved lots of <laughs> babies over my time and they come from an anxious um, place. And I know that there it's uh -huh. always a two way healing streak, right? It is. And there's that there's the exercises that I share in the group are really through heart connection, the way animals communicate and the way our dogs and cats or horses connect with us is through the heart. Mm. They're not connecting with us through our monkey brains. You know, we are so our 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 eyes are up here. They're centered. They're centered in the center of our heads. Animals make help us drop down into our heart centers. Number it's one, fantastic because that's what we want to encourage in humans is to yes. drop down and to get out of this mental realm. Yes. which is where all the self-sabotage happens. <laughs> right? And the whirling around and the, the chaos and the chaos. And we drop down into our hearts and we connect with our breath and connect with our presence and their presence. And so they pick us, they are mirrors to us. They will completely mirror what is going on within mm. ourselves. You know, horses are extraordinarily sensitive. Oh, I love, love, love working with horses. Yeah. I volunteered to do energy work uh, with horses. And I always think I'm going, I'm the volunteer. Yeah. And I leave <laughs> there feeling like so expanded and full of life. They're just incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Dogs are as well, but dogs don't give us the horses will give you almost instantaneous feedback. Yes. Dogs don't give you that feedback right away. And dogs, it's funny because dogs have been so um, domesticated with us as humans for such a long time, but they they have to develop a trust with us. So oftentimes you'll find dogs will put up walls until they feel like they can trust you. And I'm sure you've probably seen some of that in rescue. Oh you know, yeah. You have to really work to gain their trust sometimes. But once you do, and if you come at them again from a heart center, if you come at them from the the this, which I see happen in a lot of veterinary clinics and when people are just put they've got to push the animals through really quick. It it's you know, all that's, up here. 
it's mm -hmm. all up here and then they just freeze they go into freeze or flight mode which were you know all of us are unwinding from the freeze flight and bond mode from previous yeah. trauma yeah. ourselves so the animals have a lot to teach us about that as well and and about um living and dying i mean mm -hmm. i do a lot of hospice work and they i i've had t animals teach me how to die literally yes they're incredible spiritual teachers i i believe at least mine have been i've learned yeah. so much i've expanded by the dogs that we've saved and I tend mm -hmm. to rescue the ones that need a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> they're the ones that find me i think they know i won't give up on them so yeah. I get these dogs that have these weird things going on but um so i want to talk a little bit you, you talked a lot about the the points on the ears mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talk to me about that and how that affects and this is more of a curiosity of mine mm -hmm. the dogs whose ears are clipped how does that affect them um and not to be controversial i'm more asking just because i understand the energy points and the energy yeah centers. and sometimes there can be you know it's just like if we have an amputation where there's that phantom limb situation some and some acupuncturists will say that the points just move in closer but they they are gone you know mm -hmm. there's there's meridians and things along the edges of the ears the same with decline cats there's very important acupuncture points right on either side of the fingernails on mm -hmm. the toes and by decline them you're removing those points those are called ting points the beginning and ending points so they can disrupt the energy of the body even doing a spay or an abdominal surgery when we cut down the middle of the abdomen that's called the conception vessel meridian and when you cut that the energy flow can be disrupted now if it heals up really nicely without a scar or like the edges of the ears, it might not be so disrupted, but I'll do a lot of injection therapy where I actually inject B12 along the scar tissue, along the conception vessel meridian, and it'll help heal urinary incontinence. Because oh, wow. they'll, they'll, Incredible. yeah, they'll develop urinary incontinence because that energy is no longer able to flow across that meridian. The meridian is just cut. Wow. Yeah, so for, so for me and, and the teachings that I, that I hold, like say a woman, mm -hmm. if she has a hysterectomy, mm -hmm. there's still an energetic wound mm -hmm. space. So as long as we hold that intention with our fur babies, is that the same for yes. these types of points? Yeah. That's okay. what I'm kind of talking about with the phantom limb, mm -hmm. with the amputation. There's still that wound space. So there's still that space along the ears. A lot of the points that I was using like behind are behind the ears, between right. the skull and the, the ear. Yeah. And in the chest. So, and any, like, I'll just take, um, and massage the whole ear. I'll get in there with the cartilage and just gently rub and pull that whole ear out from the side of the head. And it's really they just melt. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. It feels now, really good to them. When you stepped into veterinary school, did you already know you wanted to go the holistic route? Yes. Yeah. And that was, um, that's why I decided to apply because I, I knew there was an American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association. And so I, I also knew, cause I had had my degree in biology and studied the sciences and my oldest, oldest brother was a veterinarian. So I knew what I was gonna be confronting when I stepped into that vet school. And it was, I knew I was gonna have a challenge with it, but instead of, Let's say I, and you know, I look back at myself because I considered myself really shy and really not outspoken at all back then. But I really put my fourth foot forward full steam ahead. I became president of our American Holistic Veterinary Medical Chapter, and I would bring holistic vets into the school and I would go around all these lecture halls to other classes and announce, oh, you know, Thursday afternoon, we're going to talk about homeopathy. Please come join us. Now, these are like Wisconsin farm boys. <laughs> what I love, though, is what you're telling me is this stretched you as a human like oh, really hugely. getting you yeah. out of your shell this allowed yeah. that to happen yeah. and unfold 
and I, I believed in it so much and I wanted to do it so much and I wanted to learn about it so much. My passion pushed through all of my fears and I ended up getting, you know, I was smart. I got a job down in the veterinary hospital. I made friends with all the important people in school. I made friends with the clinicians. So they knew me. They knew they could depend on me. They knew I was serious about what I was doing. And so I, I ended up gaining their respect, just like, just like with the dog, gaining their trust and respect. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't hassle me too much. So I was able to do all my externships with amazing holistic healers in vet school. I, I went out, one of my externships in veterinary school was I actually didn't go to the externship. I went to a traditional sundance out on Pine Ridge Reservation. Oh, so wow. I didn't even, the, the vet I was supposed to be working with, I asked him, I said, my sister was sundancing. It was her fourth year. And I said, listen, can I go out there? And he said, that's your externship. I want you to go out there and then I want you to come back and you can reintegrate in my backyard in my house. <laughs> so that that's was, really cool. It was really special. Yeah, it was really special. So. so what wisdom would you like to share with just keeping the household less anxious, specifically <laughs> for those, those dogs and cats and domestic animals? Yeah, I would, you know, at the end of the day, like if you come back into the house, sit down and, and love on your animals. And instead of you, like, if you want to give them some attention, but turn it into like a meditation massage session for both of you, like really sit and, and, and ground yourself with your animal there and pet them, tune into your breath and their breath connect with their hearts and let them open up to them. Let them show you what they need. Mm, and that'll beautiful wisdom. help you get out of yourself so much. I feel like we get so wound up in ourselves and let them, let them be your guide, you know, and you'll be amazed. And sometimes you'll get pictures in your head. Sometimes they'll get up and say like, Hey, we're going out for a walk right now. <laughs> sometimes they're like, they do, they tell there. you, they, they tell you. And if we follow them, even spend a half a day, follow your dog around, let them lead you and really try to look through their eyes and their nose. You know, you might not get very far. You might get only to the bottom of your driveway, but you're gonna see things in the world. My dog taught me, my dog showed me, uh, my dog showed me 50 different flower essences that I made from the local forests around my house. Now I live in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. People are like local forests. <laughs> Those don't exist here. That's what I and was it, questioning. I'm like, I thought she was in Miami. <laughs> they do. My dog showed down. We found them. We found these secret forest pathways with these incredible flowers growing wow. wild. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. And you yeah. use the flower essences in your practice as well, yeah. correct? Yeah. I yeah. use them in my practice. Yeah. Now, can people work with you online or is it in person only? No, they can work with me online. I am, um, I, they can go to my website, drjosies5elements.com. They can find me on Instagram and I do do Zoom consults one-on-one. -on -one. Beautiful. I also have an online program that's based upon the five elements of traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And that's diving more into the magic between you and your animal. So oh, we I do. Can't wait to hear more. We so do meditations on Wednesdays. We do. We're taking flower essences. We're doing plant dietas. Um, we're doing stone medicine. So, it's so really this fun. is where my animal lovers need to come and yes. explore for sure. Um, what would you like to leave our listeners with today? If you could just broadcast something out that you really want to impact people's hearts in relationship to their animals. Um, your animals are teachers and they've all come into your lives for a specific reason. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I don't know why I tear that up. I feel like it came through, um, yeah, people don't hear, people don't hear them. 
Mm. Stop and listen with your heart. They pick us, don't they? Yes. Or they find us, whatever yes. way they find their yeah. way to us. I've yes. always believed that as well. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing your big, yeah. beautiful <laughs> heart with You're us. You're welcome. I feel you. I feel you. And I love you so much because I know, I know how passionate you are about this work and I know what you're doing in the world. And I am so grateful for you for sharing your sacred medicine, helping us um, bring this out on a wider, more potent scale so that it's more available to people that do want to be change makers. Definitely. Thank you so much, Jen. And thank you for- Absolutely. So everyone, thank you so much for listening (laughs) in here with me and Dr. Josie. Um, Our book will be out on the 8th of September, available on Amazon. Um, And I'm going to put all of her contact information in the details of the video. So if if she stimulated something in you or you're curious, please reach out to her. She's somebody that you want to know. Thanks so much (laughs) for tuning in.